In my series on spark erosion I would like to show you that you can engrave any conductive material using the so called Wagner hammer. This component is a purely electromechanical interrupter circuit. The design is quite simple and essentially consists of an electromagnet and a breaker switch. The electromagnet pulls the hammer inwards as soon as the current flows through the coil. If that current is interrupted, the hammer falls back down. The trick is to let the current through the coil flow via this hammer so that it acts as a breaker switch for the coil. If voltage is now applied to the hammer, the electromagnet is activated. The workpiece to be machined acts as one contact of a switch with the tip of the hammer being the second. If the hammer has fallen down, the circuit is closed and the electromagnet is energized. This pulls the hammer upwards, but immediately interrupts the flow of electricity. Without power, the hammer falls back down until contact is finally made with the workpiece and the process begins again. My first implementation of this principle consists of a 3D printed core onto which 100 turns of 0.35mm enameled copper wire was wound. A guide for a 4mm press tube is integrated into the frame. Four cube shaped magnets are glued to the press tube, all with their north poles pointing upwards. The workpiece is connected to the plus 12V line of an old computer power supply, ground to the coil of the electromagnet. The Wegner hammer is attached to the Z axis of a CNC machine. If this is now slowly lowered, at some point the tip of the wire touches the workpiece and the described cycle of Wegner's hammer begins. The processes take place quite quickly so that opening and closing occurs at a frequency that is too high to be observed with your eyes. However, you can see the sparks that form when the press tube is pulled upwards and the plasma bridges the resulting gap until the distance becomes too large and the circuit is finally interrupted. Over time, the electromagnet heats up so much that the PET plastic in my first experimental setup melted. As a quick solution, I installed a fan. Time for a first engraving on a piece of steel. No modifications to the CNC firmware are necessary as the retraction and lowering of the Wegner hammer works purely electromechanically, driven by the 12V DC voltage that is also used for the engraving. A 0.75mm copper wire is clamped into the press tube. As you can see, the electrode occasionally sticks to the workpiece, the hammering is obviously a little too weak. The feed rate is set to 1mm per second, the set movement to 10mm to give the electromagnet a few breaks despite the fan. With these settings, engraving is completed in about 5 minutes. The result can be clearly seen on the surface. The graphic I choose is quite small at 15x16mm in order to highlight the weak points. Rubbing with steel wool does not make the engraving disappear, the grooves are sufficiently deep. The graphic is not perfectly engraved, there is space for improvement. In the second version of my Wegner hammer I used a compliant mechanism to guide the tool. With this, movement along an axis is enabled by bending parts of the structure, theoretically eliminating any backlash. The electromagnet now consists of a ferroid core glued together from parts of my scrap box. Another piece of ferrite which is glued to a 4mm threaded rod is attracted by the electromagnet. 
The system works more powerfully and is much more energy efficient than the air coil in the first experimental setup, so no fan is required. At the lower end of the threaded rod there is a tool holder for various electrodes. First I use a tungsten tip for engraving. Such tungsten tips are also used in pig welding and are quite resistant to erosion caused by sparking. Since the Wegner hammer transfers more force to the workpiece than in my previous EDM attempts, the steel sheet vibrates, which has a negative impact on the quality of the engraving. A better workpiece holder is needed. Nonetheless, the result is significantly better. After wiping off the oxide particles, the lines appear clearly. This engraving cannot be rubbed off with steel wool either. Next I'm using 0.5mm steel wire. Although the wire sticks out relatively far, it does not bend when the workpiece moves sideways. Due to the constant retraction by the electromagnet, the wire floats over the material surface instead of scratching along the steel sheet. In previous videos I shown that the material combination of steel and steel tends to weld together. This experiment shows that the vertical movement of the second version of my Wegner hammer appears to be powerful and fast enough to prevent this welding. If you look closely you will notice that the wire becomes shorter as the engraving progresses. After wiping off the oxide particles... ...and rubbing with steel wool... ...you can see that the lines are engraved very cleanly. Version 2 of my Wegner hammer obviously works without any visible backlash and the thin steel wire did not bend during the process. Really not bad for this rule of thumb construction. What about other materials? Here I am engraving on a copper plated circuit board. This also works very well, but the erosion of the steel wire is significantly higher, so I have to adjust the height of the set axis downwards by hand from time to time. The copper coating is not completely cut through, at least with these settings the process is not suitable for insulation milling, but further experiments will follow. The black copper oxides make the lines stand out clearly. The engraving is also so deep that it cannot be rubbed off with steel wool. Aluminum is engraved here. This doesn't work with the steel wire. 
aluminum forms a thick insulating oxide layer in the plasma of the spark, which means that contact with the workpiece is not restored when the Wegner hammer lowers. That's why it doesn't work with the tungsten tip either. Graphite from a pencil works. But the result isn't exactly good. The softest metal with the lowest melting point in my series of experiments is the trickiest. It finally worked with a 0.7mm copper wire and sunflower oil on the workpiece. I also reduced the feed rate to 0.5mm per second. The result is clearly visible, the black oxide lines adhere quite well to the aluminum, so that they cannot be rubbed off with a towel. However, steel wool removes the black oxide from the soft metal. But even after that, the engraving remains visible, although not quite as well. In a previous video I showed that flushing with liquid produces better results, so I filled the tub with deionized water and turned on the pump. Here I engraved the steel sheet with a blunt V-bit, which can remove material with the Wegner hammer even if it is not rotating. The lines are not so clearly visible, because the metal has not been blackened by oxides. This engraving cannot be removed with steel wool either. The Wegner hammer is an inexpensive update for every CNC or, as demonstrated here, almost every 3D printer. The 3D printer's firmware does not have to be modified, it just needs to be able to read G-code files. A more solid holder for the workpiece should ensure better results with the printer. The simple version of my Wegner hammer works quite well, but I still see a lot of potential for improvement. Making the mechanics more compact and lightweight shouldn't be too difficult. The frequency at which the Wegner hammer works depends, among other things, on the mass of the moving parts. There is still a lot to experiment here. And yes, I will build an active control system for the mechanism, for example to compensate for electrode wear. And a version in which only the wire is moved, guided at the tip, for example by the nozzle of a 3D printer. That would be like a mini welding machine. <laughs> 
and when I have a mini welding machine, I'll see what structures can be welded with it. As you can see, the development of my spark emitting machinery has a lot of potential and there are still a lot of electrode materials and other parameters to be tested. If you would like to support me in my experiments and the documentation of the results of my open source machines, you can buy one of the Homo Fazians coins shown here. The engraved metal discs are, at least at the moment, worth less than a bitcoin, but are something real that you can hold in your hands and thus get a precise impression of how good and how deep the engravings are. You can buy Homo Fazians coins on my website and there you will also find the build instruction for my Wegner hammer as well as further information about the system. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.